you still do software deployments manually and it takes hours to complete it? Well, then I just got the right thing for you, Kubernetes. Everyone is talking about it, but what is Kubernetes? Hi, my name is Rania and I'm here at Netway's headquarters. And today I will talk about Kubernetes and what Kubernetes is. We will cover the basic features of Kubernetes, basic objects, benefits of Kubernetes, and how to get started. First of all, let's take a look at what Kubernetes stands for. It is Greek and means helmsman or sailing master. It's an open source project that wants to help you optimize your environment. One of the best descriptions I found online uh, were from Gordon Half. He wrote, Kubernetes, or Kates, is an open source platform that automates Linux container operations. It eliminates many of the manual processes involved in deploying and scaling containerized applications. In other words, you can cluster together groups of hosts running Linux containers. And Kubernetes helps you easily and efficiently manage those clusters. So what Kubernetes basically represents is an open source cluster that supports an efficient approach to managing your containers. The first thing we need to know is which components are necessary to run Kubernetes. So we got the master. The master has the API running on it and it represents the front end for the Kubernetes control plane through which we can communicate over the UI, an API or an CLI. On the receiving end are the worker nodes, which run containers in pods. We will cover them in the next step. For executing the commands we receive from the API, we can use the controller manager and the cube scheduler. With the controller manager, we're able to monitor what is happening on the nodes. And the cube scheduler assigns the pods to nodes and schedules them accordingly to the user-defined needs. Then we need something that stores all our cluster data. For that, we get the etcd, which is a key value database. It's distributed between all the machines that we run and stores the configuration of the Kubernetes cluster. And to register the nodes to the API server, we get the kubelet running as the primary node agent. Each node has one. Last but not least, we need to connect all of these in a network. And for that, we get the kube proxy, which also runs on each node in your cluster. So. Using these components, we can now define Kubernetes as a container or microservice platform that orchestrates computing, networking, and stores infrastructure workloads. Because it doesn't limit the types of apps you can deploy, any language works, Kubernetes extends how we deploy containerized applications so that we can enjoy all the benefits of a truly immutable infrastructure. To sum it all up, if you can fit your app into a container, Kubernetes will be able to deploy it. To get a better understanding on how to use Kates, we have to understand the object in the API. Basic Kates objects and several higher level abstractions are known as controllers. A Kubernetes controller is a routine or loop running in a Kubernetes cluster. It's a non-terminating, uh, which means it's constantly up and running. It's keeping track of creation, update, delete events, so it can match the user-defined cluster state. First of all, we need something to run our apps on, which is the pod. It's a group of one or more containers. It contains a volume and its own IP address. Now, to define these pods, we need the service, which is an abstraction that not only defines a logical set of pods, it also defines the policy for accessing them. Similarly to load balancing, it's forwarding the traffic to healthy pods. So for example, we here got three different nodes, running containers on it and two different services that is grouping all of these pods differently. For example, with the service A, we got just one pod covered and the service B is covering two different ones. And in between, we got the control plane with two deployments that would take care of these services. Now, to get these pods up and running, we're using deployments. They describe the application lifecycle, such as which images to use for the app. Here, this would be 
represented by the Kubernetes master with Kubelet running on the nodes, or a Grafana Loki running Promptail, as well as Grafana Prometheus uh, running a node exporter as an example. Also, you can define the number of pods there should be and the way in which, in which they should be updated. To group all of these nodes and clusters, we utilize the namespaces. They provide a mechanism to isolate groups of resources within a single cluster. The names need to be unique within a namespace, but not across them. That means we get, for example, on this one node namespace, B and A, but also on the second namespace, B and A, since it's separated from each other. But we would also need to name those differently. We could not give them the same name in the same namespace, so we would have to change that. These basic objects are written in YAML. Here we get an example uh, where we would have to enter the version and what kind of uh, object that would be, in this case a pod, uh, the name and how we want to name it, what kind of app we're going to deploy, and the specification of the containers. So we also have to name them, choose an image for them, and also choose a port like 80, for example. So we talked about what kinds of controllers we have and had a short overview on what they are. But what benefits does Kubernetes offer you? Well, out of the box, Kates offers several key features that allow us to run an immutable infrastructure. Containers can be killed, replaced, and self-heal automatically. And the new container gets access to those support volumes, secrets, configurations, etc. that makes it function. This can be achieved through defining your architecture and controller loops so that the defined target state will be changed into the status quo. To scale your containerized application efficiently, we get the following features. Since work environments quickly change, we can utilize the horizontal scaling. So that you're able to scale your application automatically from the command line or UI. Meaning that when there's more traffic, you can easily change your environment according to demand. An example of this would be the horizontal pod autoscaler. This boils down to that the response to an increased load is to deploy more pods, as you can see here. For all the changes you apply to your pods or nodes, we get the rollouts and rollbacks up there, which monitor the health of your application, ensuring all instances don't fail or go down simultaneously, which is providing you better high availability. And as you can see here, we push an update over the control plane towards the pod. And if something goes wrong, you can roll back the changes and continue where you left off. To keep your environment efficient, service discovery and load balancing is key. Since each pod has its own IP address, you can put a set of containers behind a single service for load balancing, which is important for automated and smooth scaling. Pods that have a certain label can be found automatically and can be easily added to the load balancer member group, where it's easier to manage the traffic. But since it's also important to have a flexible storage solution, the storage orchestration got you covered. You can automatically mount either a local, a public cloud, or network storage. And to make it easier to work with image secrets, the secret and configuration management allows you to update or create an image without the need to rebuild it every time. We get the API here, which is creating the secret, pushing it into the pod. So you no longer have to shut everything down each time you want a new secret. Next up, we got the self-healing. It's keeping your cluster healthy and available, and is automatically starting failed containers, replacing and rescheduling containers as nodes die. It also kills containers that don't respond to your user-defined health check and waits to advertise to clients until they are ready. So here we get the self-healing cycle that is always continuing. To increase your efficiency in every aspect, we got the automatic bin packing to schedule your containers based on resource requirements and other constraints. So when you specify a resource limit for a container, the kubelet will enforce those limits so that the 
running container is not allowed to use more of these resources than the limit you set. This way you can turn off nodes afterwards and reduce your cost. And last but not least, we got the big environment around Kubernetes, meaning that you can get everything from software libraries to third-party tools integrated in Kubernetes. Here we got the link to the Cloud Native Foundation landscape, where there's graphics like these and like huge scale. Check it out. So you heard all that fancy stuff about Kubernetes, but what's your next step? Well, you can either install Kubernetes on your on-premise hardware or get it managed by cloud providers. Cloud providers like Netways are now offering managed Kubernetes services that help you set up a quiz testing environment. You can do this by simply creating an account on my.nws.netways.de. There you can go and take a look at this, for example, where you can see our login page. You create your account here and then you have a login screen that looks like something like this, where you see your projects. And here we would be under the column Kubernetes and you just simply click on create. As soon as you created your cluster, you can see here your first steps and follow these to get started. However, if you want to create your own Kubernetes cluster in an isolated and development test environment, you can use Minikube. You can easily run it on your own PC to test a few of the our named features here. If you're interested in starting your own managed environment, you can follow the links in the video description below. If you like this video and want to help other people understand Kubernetes, feel free to share and like this video because there will be more videos like this in the future. So stay tuned. Have a good one.